Welcome to the YourFamilyCapital.com podcast. I'm Brian Heyer, CPA. I'm an authorized practitioner of the Nelson Nash Institute, and we teach the infinite banking concept, uh, which was best described in the book Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. Uh, Today I wanted to go through how to calculate the internal rate of return on your whole life insurance policy, why it's important, why it's not important, and what it tells us. Uh, First, what we'll do off screen here, let me copy from an illustration all the data. Now, I'm using Google Sheets, and that quickly allows us to uh, bring that information right in. And it allows us to split that up to make it easy to find the There we go. There, now we have proper columns. And here we have the death benefit and the cash value column, the dividends. And this column is what we're really after. Uh, These are the cash flows of our uh, policy, how much we're putting in. Now, this is a policy that I own, and uh, so this is real world. This is not a hypothetical. Now, what the internal rate of return measures is the compound average growth rate of every dollar that goes into a project and comes out of a project. So, uh, for instance, if you're a business wants to assess which division is doing well, Uh, where the uh, business wants to deploy more capital uh, to to, it needs to evaluate if uh, we have a division that's going to bring us cash sooner do we want that compared to a division which is going to or a project which is going to bring us cash later but it'll be more of it so internal rate of return allows us to standardize that calculation and take the time element out of it and the formula that is used in um, Google Sheets or Excel or Open Office, um, we always want to reflect the cash values going out of our system or out of our company uh, as a negative. So in this case, you can see um, this is an ongoing policy. And I already have, um, we're approaching the third year. So I've already made, uh, this illustration shows we've already made premium payments. And in this case, Um, I already looked up the numbers here. Uh, Let me highlight this to make it easier to look at, easier to find on your screen. And we want to turn these numbers negative. So I used equal minus, and there we'll just copy that down. Okay. And the formula we use is IRR, and we're going to select those cash flows. It views each one as a given year. Okay, now we're getting an error because uh, the formula recognizes, hey, we have a lot of cash going out, but we don't have a cash flow going in, therefore it's an incomplete number. So what we want to do is use the, the death benefit that occurs later, uh, in year 83, in this case, uh, the insured would be 83 years old. Okay, so we have all these negative outflows and a projected death benefit of $440,000. And that gives us an internal rate of return on all those cash flows going into the policy of 4.15%. And here's why that 4.15% internal rate of return on all the premiums we pay into the policy is important because it shows us uh, uh, two things. We can assess um, how components of the policy, the writers of the policy, affect the uh, internal rate of return and whether or not that's worthwhile. Uh, for instance, adding writers, adding paid-up additions writers, how that affects the, uh, uh, the growth of the policy in the long run. We know how it affects it in the short run. The other, oh, let me change this here, death benefit. I realized there was a typo there. No good. 
the other assurance we ha the biggest assurance we have with this internal rate of return calculation is that in the long run it just doesn't matter there's so much noise in the big wide world about maximizing the early cash value by overloading a policy with paid up additions and squeezing as much as we can into those early years we need to understand that it's not that critical it does not affect the long-term rate of return on the policy this was a study that I did with um, uh, well a policy I looked at how the years of paying PUA whether it's very short-term you know three four five years versus longer term paying it 30 years how that affects the internal rate of return of the policy and in terms of death benefit makes very little difference at all okay eight hundredths of a percent in the long run just doesn't matter it's not going to affect your policy uh, performance in terms of internal rate of return what does affect your policy performance is the more premium you put in the higher your death benefit and that's what we're looking forward to in, well looking forward to is the wrong wrong way to phrase that <laughs> uh, we cannot have cash value without death benefit and um, uh, the beauty of whole life is that the cash value eventually is death eventually equals death benefit it's just the way it is um, when we look at becoming your own banker again go to page 71 72 on the even distribution of age classes as we develop over the years over the decades a system of policies with our uh, insuring ourselves spouses children grandchildren uh, business associates we do, we have a system of policies which over decades will push money back push capital from death benefit back into our um, you know family capital system that's why we want to assess the death benefit now in the short run if we have specific projects in mind such as rental homes and we really want to assess what our death what our internal rate of return will be on the cash we put into the system uh, in the next 10 years then we would look at the cash value IRR to summarize why the internal rate of return on our properly structured whole life policies is important to understand is that it gives us confidence to know that every dollar of premium that we put into our policies will yield a return for us however uncomfortable we might feel in those early years with that loss of liquidity as we start the policies as in our capitalization phase in our cost of acquisition phase of these policies we know that that money is coming back to us in the long run with paid with uh, you know death benefit the second consideration is that we are getting a uh, rate of return on the premium we pay as paid up additions what I show on the screen here is that in the long run it really doesn't matter what percent of paid up additions you pay in your policy we are solving for the banking function we are trying to remove ourselves uh, from the clutches the talons of the snakes and dragons where the more capital we put into our system the more capital we will have later in life our children will have our grandchildren we're looking multi-generationally here in the long run the insurance company is going to manage itself properly it's going to uh, you know evaluate its underwriting policies its underwriting risk we can't control that we cannot control the investment portfolio that the insurance company uh, manages um, we don't affect that the only thing we can affect is the premium that we pay and the more capital we want to control the bigger premium we need to pay so start with what you can and add to it later so anyway I hope this was helpful hope this gives you hope for the future and uh, please stay in touch thank you for visiting uh, the podcast today if you have any questions drop us a note at yourfamilycapital.com make it a great day